Okay. Hello, ReLive. Welcome. I am so excited for tonight. And I know you guys are going to get a lot out of tonight and it's going to be amazing. But before we get to that, how are you guys doing? How are y'all doing? How was spring break? A lot of us are coming back from spring break and I was just chatting with the guests. Um, we drove to Panama City Beach during spring break. I will never do that again. <laughs> I quickly learned like that's not happening. In fact, it was so bad, you guys. We got there and I was like looking on Southwest like for planes to come home because I was like, I don't want to sit through that traffic again. So I hope you guys had a great week. It's been a while. I think, uh, gosh, when were we back here? It was last month. So here we are. And I'm going to introduce to you our guest who I am just so thrilled when I was thinking about kicking off ReLive again in January. I was like, I would really love for Steve Carter to be a guest. Well, I'm just going to message him. What's the worst that's going to happen? He's like not going to respond to me. That's the worst that's going to happen. You guys, he responded and he's here and I'm so excited. And some of you are probably like, who's Steve Carter? Steve Carter is a motivational speaker a pastor and an author. His latest book is titled The Thing Beneath the Thing, which I think is a really cool title, where reader, readers will learn how to live their most holy and spiritual life, healthy life, by unlearning habits that keep you stuck. So that's really intriguing, and I'm excited for him to talk about that later. Steve is the husband to his wife, Sarah, and the father to two children, Emerson and Mercy. So please help show the love and welcome Steve to the show tonight. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. What an honor. I remember getting your Instagram message and um, it seemed like you've built up this little community of people and just, uh, and I was like, oh yeah. And, you know, we've shared some connection at Northview and I was like, man, this will be awesome. So uh, thanks for having me. I, I love, I love watching people just step out and do brave new things. And it's been fun to see you and what you're creating. Well, thank you. Thank you. I've always, it was the July before COVID, July of 19. And I was like, I always want to have a talk show. And I was like, why not? Yeah. We've got social media. Why not? And I sent my sister a message and within 30 minutes, she had my logo made. And I was like, we're doing this. We are doing it. So no turning back. So Awesome. Well, thank you for carving some time out tonight. I know you're a very busy man, so I want to be respectful of your time. So we will just get into the questions, get into the meat. So what I love most, the first time I met you was at, and I say met with air quotes, the first time I learned of Steve Carter was at Northview, the church that I attend, and he was a guest pastor there. And immediately his passion, your energy on stage, like is just it's, um, what's the word I'm looking Contagious. It's contagious. And you can tell that you have such a passion for it. And every time I left a sermon, a service, I would leave with goose, goosebumps. So I'm just curious, like, when did you know this was your calling? When did you know you wanted to be a pastor? And how did that kind of all come about? Yeah, you know, I, I didn't want to be one. Um, I, I was a film major in college, playing basketball. And, um, I had, I had this kind of unique situation where I didn't really grow up in a Christian home. My mom had put me in a, a Christian, like grade school. Mm -hmm. Um, I had been mentored by, uh, two juniors in high school. I was in seventh grade. Their names were Dominic and Nathan, but they went by the name dominate and, Dominic just came up to me one day and said, Hey, Carter, do you want to know how to dominate life? And, and I, I, I wanted what they had. I didn't know what they had. I just wanted to be like them. Mm -hmm. And these two, um, they took me to, uh, in and out and in and out burger is where the Shekinah glory of the Lord descends in burgerly form. If you ever had it, you know it. <laughs> and, uh, it was just, it was just real and honest and good. And, um, and so my, I, I probably like six months, seven months after hanging with them, I got baptized and right away they were like, you got to go after your parents. Mm. 
And I was like, you got to go after my parents. Like, why me? <laughs> like you, what you do works. Uh, and they're like, no, nope, you got to let grace has to flow through you. And so my senior year of high school, I got to baptize my mom. And then my sophomore year of college, I'm a film major on my 19th birthday. I get the chance and privilege to baptize my father. Wow. And my dad comes out of the baptism waters and has this experience and he's drying off and I'm celebrating. He goes, Hey, like something just happened. And I'm like, yeah, man, you got baptized. Congratulations. You know, this is awesome. He goes, no, no, no. Like the strongest sense that I'm supposed to sell everything and we're supposed to move to Grand Rapids to restore a relationship with my parents. So my grandparents, his parents. Wow. And I was like, he's like, do you think that's God? And I'm like, hey, man, we live in Southern California, 10 minutes from the beach. That's not God to move to Grand Rapids. Um, but I, I didn't say that. I was like, that could be. That really could be. And so, so he sold out of his company. We sold our house. We moved back. And uh, again, I just go into community college and thinking I would go to U of M or somewhere just to further film stuff. And I came in contact uh, right before I moved out there with our church secretary at our small Camrio Christian church. And she just said, Hey, I heard you're moving to Grand Rapids. I say, Oh yeah. You know? Um, and she's like, I used to live in Grand Rapids. I was like, Oh, great. And she's like, we went to a church that was just like Camrio Christian and the pastor there is awesome. They don't have a youth pastor. You should, you should, you should go. And I'm like, well, I don't really want to be a youth pastor, but like, yeah, but you, you know, you volunteer. So I show up there. Mm -hmm. And the pastor liked me and he basically said uh, to me and a couple other volunteers, like you guys can run the student ministries. So wow. this little thing just starts to grow. And while that's happening, I'm going to another church just to feed my soul. Mm -hmm. And I finally go and meet with this. I've never really talked about the story publicly. So sorry, it's like so long, but like uh, I, I go and meet with this pastor of the church that I'm going, that's like really feeding me. And I want to sit down with him and I want to ask him, like, how do you know you're supposed to go into ministry? Right. And so I sit down with him, ask him the question. And he goes, well, what do people say about you? I'm like, I don't know. I mean, people are nice and kind, but I, I nothing to like walk away from film and what I want and making money to, you know, going to have pleats in your pants and like, you know, just like, <laughs> like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. So I leave, I leave that place. And I was kind of bummed because I was hoping he was going to give me a word. Mm -hmm. He gave me a question and I drive home and I walk through the, the front door and there's a, a blinking answering machine. If you remember those yes. in it, and I hit the play button and it's the pastor from the church where there's the youth ministry that I'm volunteering okay. at. They said, Hey, Steve, it's pastor Dick Robinson. Uh, I'd love to, to have a conversation with you. If you got time, give me a shout. So I call him right back and I'm like, he's like, Hey, can you come in? I'm like, yeah, I'll be there in like 15 minutes. Get back in the car, drive over there. I walk in and I kid you not. He literally answers the question and he tells me, he said, and, and I'll never forget this moment. He just, he says, you have a gift that you don't even know you have. And when you speak and what you say, people listen. And I know you haven't been to college for this, but I want to hire you right now to be our youth pastor. Wow. And, and I didn't take the job because I didn't think that was the right thing. What, but what those words did was solidify, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And then I went back to California to Hope International University, uh, changed my major from film and communications to um, biblical studies with an emphasis on preaching. And, and it's been kind of from there. So wow. a little, did little ask, ride. Did you ask your advisor how many people change from film to biblical studies? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, it was funny this past week, um, my preaching professor was just back in Arizona. Uh, and so we had breakfast and he's awesome. as good a man as possible. Next time I see him, I'll ask him that question. Yes, definitely. Definitely. I have to tell you the first time I heard about Dominic and Nathan and how they go by dominate, 
I really thought the story was going to go a different direction. I was like, oh, they bullied you and like, you know, like they dominated <laughs> you. So I was very um, pleased when it went a different way. Do you still have contact with them? I do. I do. Um, Dominic works in the film industry. Uh, he does steady cam and it's fun just to stay connected. Uh, he married um, a friend of mine. And so they've got a few kids and then Nate actually lives out in Georgia. And so the three of us will jump on via text uh, from time to time. Not as much, I think is uh, we'd all like, but um, sure. it's always good when we can, can kind of plug in and stay connected, but it's, it's, it's a fun I don't know if they fully understand um, how big of an influence they were in my life and how far just the simple invitation and what that, what that decision um, meant, not just for me, mm -hmm. but for God to work in me and through me and um, with me and for me, you know, it's just, it's their, their legacy. Um, is in the amount of lives they've been able to to kind of touch through me um and through where god's been able to take me um i can't imagine if they would have said no when they had that prompting or whisper right you know so right wow what a story what a story thanks for sharing that i appreciate it the other thing that you bring to most of your do they call them sermons, teachings, talks? What What do you call them these days? <laughs> Depends if you like it, right? right. Like that boring thing, that lecture, that, that lecture. yeah, no, uh, sermons, preach, teach. Well, I, I'm good with whatever. So the other thing you talk about a lot are only God stories. And so many of them you've shared and they are just amazing. I'm wondering if you have a favorite one and if you would share one. So other listeners that have not heard it before can just see how God can work in your life and how this a story that you're going to tell, like, cause I know it's going to give me goosebumps. We'll give them goosebumps. Yes. So just for context sakes and uh, only God's story for me is something that I can't explain in my own strength. It's, it, it's something that um, I, I didn't manufacture um I just felt a whisper or a prompting or some sense like to say yes. And I knew I had a choice. I could say no or say yes. And when you then step in, all of a sudden you're like, oh my goodness, God, you are up to something. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, I also try at the same time is to um, push myself in prayer to have an only God story every seven days. So, mm -hmm. so because I think it's really, really easy for us to live off of kind of the highlight reels, um, of decades ago, but when you're, when you're like in the hopes that God is, um, going to use you when you're, mm -hmm. when you're trying to be open, it, it just, um, you become more aware, more dependent and also more expected. So here's, here's the latest one. I'll tell you this. And, um, and I, I'm. I'm going to like protect a name so it doesn't feel like it's a form of like name dropping or any of that. Sure. But I'll say this, um, just similarly to you. And <laughs> by the way, similarly is the hardest word for me to say. So I just mumbled right there. Similarly, um, but similarly, uh, I, you know, I like, I like interacting with people. Mm -hmm. um, my voicemail on my phone is full um, because I don't like voicemail messages. Um, I, I, it's, I don't, I, I got an inbox. I got, you know, Instagram, dark DMS, all that stuff. Uh, but when people message me, I, I try to, I try to respond back and I got this message, uh, about a week and a half ago from someone and I knew the name, I knew the name, but I was like, there's no way there's that, that, that it's this person. So I, um, I, I literally, uh, right back and, and I, and I thought it was just a pretend account. Someone was just impostering and, uh, the guy's like, Hey, I just heard you teach. And it was a teaching about only God's story. So this is like, where it's all wow. kind of coming together. And, uh, cause I had spoken at Saddleback and he had somehow like at a satellite campus was, was brought there by a friend. 
and sat there and he and his girlfriend and they were like you you both like lead with your heart like you 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 would connect with this guy so anyways he right he reaches out and uh two days ago we had we've like connected by phone and i i was like so blown away um because i was like there were a couple things that i had been praying for probably a month ago about something and in this conversation here's this guy who just is is doing some amazing things but wants faith to be more but doesn't necessarily know how he's mm -hmm. asking and but he was then also speaking into my life some stuff and i was like this is this is like a both and conversation and i have no idea where it's going to go but a couple of things I said to him were really, really important for him to take his next step in the faith journey. Mm -hmm. And then off the cuff comments that he made were actually like super, super uh, encouraging for me and where my family is going. So I say all that just to go, uh, there are some like this one that is like in real time and I think is actually going to uh, – bloom into some incredible conversations and opportunities but then there's just ones like i believe that god is everywhere and if god is everywhere he's up to something and if he's up to something that means every moment is brimming with redemptive potential mm -hmm. so one that often um you know i go to is i was in palestine so palestinian territory in bethlehem staying at the intercontinental hotel real place and the wi-fi was down and so I was crossing the street because across the street from the Intercontinental Hotel was a hookah lounge. Mm -hmm. And I thought I would stand outside this hookah lounge, steal free Wi-Fi, check in <laughs> with my family, then go back to bed. So it's like one in the morning. I'm crossing the street and I'm tired. And there are four Palestinian soldiers just like, you know, I can see them. And probably like a three iron away is a massive security wall separating Israel from Palestine. And there's Israeli soldiers that are literally looking down at these Palestinian soldiers. And I feel like God whispers, go talk to the Palestinian soldiers, which my response to God is, why don't you just give me free Wi-Fi and I can go to bed? <laughs> so I end up going, having this conversation. Lo and behold, three of the four Palestinian soldiers live in a place called Balada. Now, Balada is a UN refugee camp. Uh, that's 1.3 square miles where over 35,000 people live. So they're on top of each other. It's wow. wild. And I was actually taking a team from California there two days later. So I said, hey, we're going to be there. Would you would you give us a tour? They're like, sure. I was like, amazing. They were in fatigues and they had massive guns. I was like, just don't bring your guns and give us a tour. So we do this tour. We get done with the tour. And outside Balada's gate, a stone's throw away is a church. Now these are these are Palestinian, and and I didn't know this at the time, but but non-practicing Muslim Arabs, and they're here. And I point to this church over here, and I'm like, "You ever been there?" And they're like, "No." And they're like, "What is it?" I'm like, "It's a church." So I take them to this church, but if you go down in the basement of the church, there's a well, and in that well you can bring up water, and this is the well that Jesus. The scripture says in John chapter four, Jesus had to go to Samaria where he met a Samaritan woman. And then this woman becomes the first literally evangelist in the book of John. And you can still bring up water. And so in this moment, I start talking about what are you desiring? What are you longing for? Some of us would say it's shalom. It's like Hebrew for heaven invading earth and or in Arabic, it's it's salam or or for us it's peace. But I'm like, what, what is it? And Jesus is saying in this passage that he is the true living water that can satisfy that thirst and those deepest longings. And, and so I just start to say, does anybody want that living water found in Christ? And the first people to come forward are these Palestinian soldiers. So now I'm like questioning, do they really understand what I was saying? And like, do they know what I'm talking about? And they're like, we get it. This is, we want, we want what you have. We want this. So long story short, like these guys come to this moment. We pray over them. They come to faith. This is this beautiful story. Like one of them gives me a necklace. One of them gives me a senior picture from high school, just oh. hilarious. 
And I, I leave this moment and I have this profound like sense. I was looking for free Wi-Fi and God was looking to ex- expand heaven. Mm-hmm. I, I was looking just as being most efficient mm-hmm. and doing one thing that I wanted and totally miss that God was stirring and mm-hmm. up to something. And it just made me wonder how many times when I walk into Starbucks or, you know, if I'm in downtown Carmel, Indiana, if I'm in West Lafayette or, you know, like mm-hmm. if I'm somewhere and all of a sudden, like, do I actually believe God's there? The marketplace, mm-hmm. my neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And what if my ears, my eyes, my heart, my mind could be open to what if God would want to use me in this moment? Mm-hmm. And once I feel those promptings, those whispers. I've almost become too addicted to them because they just lead to crazy stories and the kinds of stories that are so crazy that you can only say only God, but the kind of stories that are so crazy and so only God that like you just look for, they feed Mm -hmm. you, they fuel you. And because you get the sense or the thrill of God actually using someone broken like me to kind of partner with him and what his heart is and his heart has always ever only been for people, for people like you and me. And so that's, that's the heart, the spirit. I mean, I got a whole litany of them, but those are, those are the moments where I just sit there and go, Mm -hmm. it just had to be God. Just had to be Mm -hmm. God. Yeah. I would say probably the top favorite of mine is the uh, basketball one in Burundi. Burundi. Bujumbura Burundi. Yes. 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 That's right. That's a good one. That's a good one. Awesome. Well, I do. I want to go to this question now. I had it down a little bit lower, jotted down, but you've mentioned it a couple of times. And this is something that I am always curious, like, how do you know it's God whispering in your ear and not your mind manufacturing something? What what do you think of that? Like, yeah, that's a great question. That's a great question. So, um, if it's shame, it's not God. If it's uh, fear, it's most likely not God. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, unless it's like, hey, watch out. That's dangerous. Like sometimes mm-hmm. there's that. But for the most part, if it's like resistance or fear, like questioning the power, that's mm-hmm. not God. If it's for the good of another, mm-hmm. whether it's God or not, uh, I'm going to try and do it. Yeah. And I would say majority of the time I see God's fingerprints all over it. So mm-hmm. if it's, if it's actually inviting me to step more and more into who I was created to be, mm-hmm. I think, I think God's in that. Mm-hmm. If it's, if it's opportunity for me to grow and, or to serve or to love another yeah. So, so for me, it's just kind of almost dissecting the tone. Mm-hmm. Is it more shame? Is it more fear? Or is it more actually like love and grace and mm-hmm. forgiveness? Um, so then I don't, I don't try to overthink it. Mm-hmm. I just, I just kind of go with it. And if the door closes, okay. If I just want to be someone um, as uh, Colonel Gary Wilson, he's in the Salvation Army. Colonel Gary Wilson always says, um, the answer is yes. The bigger th- thought though is what's the question? Mm-hmm. My answer to you, God, is gonna be yes. The bigger ask is what's the question? Mm-hmm. What are you asking of me? Mm-hmm. To forgive this person? Oh, well, the answer is yes. Mm-hmm. To be generous? Well, the answer is yes. Go mm-hmm. serve. Oh, the answer is yes. Like, so so for me, I I just when I when I look at when it's for another person. Um, when it's something that's going to kind of activate a spiritual gift or an opportunity to showcase love or grace or live out mm-hmm. or embody the way of Jesus, then mm-hmm. I try to say yes. The places where often um, uh, I, I, is where it prevents me is often when I'm too distracted, mm-hmm. too stressed, or uh, too into my own self that I miss out on the voice or the promptings, but I am a firm believer that God is often prompting, often inviting. Um, so I just have to say yes. Awesome. 
yeah, if you imagine like if you would have been too busy thinking, I just need to get the free Wi-Fi. I just need to get the free Wi-Fi. And then none of that other stuff would have opened up for you. That's right. That's right. So, that's amazing. That's amazing. Let's move into um, what it means to be brave and live this invitational life. And I think back to the story of Ananias that you talked about in, again, one of your sermons, your teachings, whatever you want to call it, and how he heard this whisper. And I believe he first was like, no, not me. A am I remembering this correctly? Um, <clears throat> no. Um, I'm sorry. And I don't, I'm like, I'm like, how do I say no in a nice way? Um, but, but I would say this. I'm such a smart student. No, 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 no. You're great. You're great though. You, you have most of it right. Okay. So, cool. so well, here's a, here's good. a guy, Ananias, who's a disciple. So Talmudim, apprentice of Jesus. And to be a disciple, you had high desire and high devotion to be like your rabbi. So he's 150 miles away from J-Town, Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is like the Mecca. Like this is the, the, the religious epicenter. He's 150 miles by, you know, horseback and air Birkenstocks, you know. And so he uh, he's there. And it says that the God spoke to him in a vision and said, Ananias. He quickly responds, yes, Lord. So his first response is yes. And then God's like, awesome. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to go down to Straight Street, downtown Damascus. There's a guy named Saul. He's had a vision about you. I told him I have so much confidence in you that he knows that you're going to show up. Mm -hmm. But Ananias, and this is where you're partly right. Ananias, though, in his brain is like, wait, wait, wait. You want me to go see Saul? Mm -hmm. The guy who has been given permission by the religious leaders to come shut down our little house church here mm -hmm. this dude imprisons people beats people murdered a guy named steven i mean he's i i i get the sense that ananias is so human just like me just like i would have been in that moment going god i know you love everyone i just don't know if you've been watching the news man <laughs> this dude is bad mm -hmm. and and god just speaks right back and says go this man's my chosen instrument mm -hmm. and ananias has a choice so so ananias says yes god speaks to him gives him instructions and then he begins to go and count the costs mm -hmm. and what i love is then ananias goes and what we know is the guy he goes to see saul becomes paul and mm -hmm. paul writes the majority of the new testament and so my big question is what if ananias said no Right. We might not have Romans. We might not have Philippians. Mm -hmm. And so when I think about the bravery and the courage, oftentimes in living an invitational life is sometimes I Jedi mind trick myself and mm -hmm. I, and I go, man, I don't, I don't want to make an invitation. I don't want to mm -hmm. say something because this person might say no. So I say you're no for me, but what I've been really trying to help people understand is oh, it's, it's really it's really not about what they say. Mm -hmm. It's about your posture and response to the whispers and the promptings of God. Mm -hmm. So I have gotten to the point where I want to be so quick with a yes when God whispers, so quick to a yes when God prompts. And if I make an invitation for someone to come to church or for you know to grab coffee to hear someone's story and someone tells me no, okay, all right, well. It's not the way that I wanted, but Mark Burnett, who started the voice and survivor, he pitches shows all the time. Mm -hmm. And he says, anytime I hear the word, no, I just think next opportunity. And yeah, that's a great way to think about it. Yeah. So I just think like, just be someone who's just trusting that God has put you in that situation to either teach you something, prepare mm -hmm. you for something, or maybe create a moment where someone can experience what redemption and restoration and mm -hmm. renewal in Christ is truly all about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Let's go to this. Uh, I have to share my prop now. So one, uh, I think it might have been one of the first times I heard you speak. And, you know, I talked about your passion and your energy and how you were doing crazy things like throwing bird seed on the stage or this one particular time you had us all stand up. You invited us all to stand up and yell or chant Rock Shazak, which so I'm going to show, I showed you earlier. It's, I never get the direction right on the camera. <laughs> That's but, awesome. Um, 
this is my mug. It hit me so much that I went and I made them. I just happened to be going to like a pottery thing with my mom and sister that day that I was like, I know exactly what I'm going to make. So why don't you tell us like the significance behind it and what that means? Yeah. So Rakshazak is the phrase, actually it's Rakshazak Amat. And uh, three times in four verses, God says to Joshua, be strong and courageous. And remember Joshua, um, He's taken over for the great Moses. And, you know, nobody, nobody ever remembers the guy who followed Michael Jordan. Uh, nobody, nobody remembers the guy who followed, you know, Peyton Manning. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's one of those things where you often just are like, who was that person? And it's usually one year and then they get the actual next replacement, you know? <laughs> so, so Joshua's just feeling like, who am I? To step in, to follow in this guy's, there's no way. Mm -hmm. And God's like, no, I, I, I see you. Like I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. Mm -hmm. And here's what I need you to know. Be strong and courageous. Mm -hmm. Be strong and very courageous. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Mm -hmm. And that phrase, be strong, and courageous, wasn't in your strength. Is be strong and courageous that God's got this, that God's got you, that God's mm -hmm. put you in this place for, as an Esther language, such a time as this. So Rak Shazak actually became the battle cry for the Hebrew nation. So all of Israel will be on this, you know, kind of getting ready for battle. And, you know, now we have like, you know, going into a basketball game, we've got some of our jock jams, warm up music, whatever, <laughs> whatever your favorite song is. Well, back then it was like, you would just have these chants, mm -hmm. and this chant was a nation screaming, "Rock, Shazak, Rock, Shazak!" And so I just I I had moments where I was walking in 2018 through probably the most difficult season of my life, and I really felt like, man, I. I need to be strong, courage. I need to trust. I need to believe that you put me here at this point for such a time as this or West Point cadets prayer language to, to choose the harder right over the lesser wrong. But I'm scared. Mm -hmm. I don't think I have what it takes. And so I'd get up early in the morning. I'd walk around the a nature preserve. And there were times where I would scream rock shazak and it's just fun to say so i'd scream it and i'd believe it and then there were other times i couldn't scream it i didn't think i had it i didn't my my you know i believe but help me with my unbelief i i couldn't scream it i could just barely whisper it and it was like a, a prayer of desperation and so this phrase just became an anthem um a vision for a season when um it felt harder to access the courage to meet the demands of reality mm -hmm. and the strength to trust that God had not forsaken or forgotten, but had actually placed me in this situation for a reason. Mm -hmm. Wow. So there you guys have it. If you are feeling fearful or not brave, just start chanting rock Shazak. And yeah. I mean, if nothing else, you'll feel better. <laughs> I think you'll feel better. Short of chanting Rock Shazak, what are some other things um, that you could do to combat the, you know, non bravery feeling that you might have welling up inside of you when, you know, you hear a God whisper or a prompt? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, if you think about spiritual formation, you know, Dallas Willard, incredible mind and voice. Uh, he, he passed a few years ago, but he taught about vision, intention, and means. And oftentimes when I'll sit with people and just try to help them grow closer, um, I'm often amazed at how many sincere Christ followers don't have a vision for this season or for their mm -hmm. life. And and for me, it, it shifts. You know, For a season, mm -hmm. it was just simply rock shizak. It was like a rally mm -hmm. cry. Another time, it was keep the remain thing the main thing. Mm -hmm. Um, most recently it's been a life anchored in Jesus has one is one that has nothing to prove, nothing to lose and nothing to hide. Mm -hmm. So if you don't, if you're struggling with bravery, well, what would a life that was actually brave look like? Mm -hmm. Write that sentence, 
put that sentence in a place in your Bible where you could, mm -hmm. you could like be reminded of it. Um, like when I think of bravery, I think of it, it's like having the courage to meet the demands of reality. So a life that goes deep with Jesus has the courage to meet the demands of reality. That's, that's what you want to be. Well, now the intention is every day you're getting 35,000 choices coming at you. Well, you have a choice to choose to actually embody that, that vision or not. Um, and so Dallas would talk about will, how we have impulsive will, which is where we just kind of do what we want to do. You know, mm -hmm. I eat that, see that, whatever. You just let your, your kind of flesh take over your, your unhealthy patterns or desires take over. Mm -hmm. And, and what's amazing though, is you also have a reflective will so that when those questions come, you can ask yourself or those opportunities come, will this actually help me become my vision? Mm -hmm. And so I, that's when you reflect and don't make an impulsive decision, but make a reflective decision. Mm. And what Dallas says is that underneath that is something called embodied will. And this is like the spiritual muscle memory. So when, if you come home and you always make the impulsive decision when you're bored to look at your phone, there is an embodied will. There is muscle memory that you just pick this thing up on mm -hmm. the regular, but if you have a moment of patience and all of a sudden or like boredom and you're like, okay, what's the bravest thing I could do right now? <laughs> That's going to you. And you like have reflective will and you actually choose to live out your vision. That's going to have muscle memory. Mm -hmm. So, so then it's vision and tension. And then he says, M are the means or methods. And these are the practices. Mm. Like nobody drifts towards being a person of bravery. So think about David. David didn't wake up one day and go, crazy. I think I'm going to go fight a giant. <laughs> he's he's bringing cheese to his brothers. <sighs> and all of a sudden he's like, what is going on? Like, why is the whole nation not saying rock Shazak? Why are they all just sitting on the sidelines? Mm -hmm. And he's like, I'll go at Goliath. And they're like, dude, you are a shepherd boy. And he's like, who are you talking? What are you talking about? Like, do you know in the middle of the night when a bear came, I went after that bear and I killed that bear. And when a lion came, I went after that lion. I killed that lion. And just like I went after the bear and after the lion, I'm going to go after that giant. Mm -hmm. And and what this scripture is beautifully saying is that when nobody was looking, when nobody was watching, mm -hmm. David owned the moment. Mm -hmm. And he had no idea by making that one little decision how it was preparing for what God had in store for him. So there could be a practice. Where you're like, you know what? I get scared of blank. And you know what? I'm going to actually speak up in that meeting today. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? I, I, uh, like, I, what is, what is going to be a step where it's going to grow your trust and your courage to meet the demands of reality? Mm -hmm. um, you know, when someone says something that I disagree with, and instead of just nodding my head and being a people pleaser, I'm just going to say that is a fascinating thought. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about blank and share? Or I mean, I, there could be a whole bunch of them, but you just have to name a practice that's going to help you grow the reflective embodied will to actually become the vision. And again, we do this at the gym. We make a plan. I want to be at this weight. I want to mm -hmm. get this muscle tone. I want to do this. And there's disciplines at, at play. I got to show up to the gym. I got to watch what I put in my body. Da, 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 da. The same thing is true when we're renovating our heart and our mind and our soul and our body to be open to the whispers, but also into becoming the person that Jesus says, I can offer you the full life, yeah. the fully abundant life. It doesn't mean it's just going to happen. And that's, that's the tricky part. Dallas would say that grace is opposed to earning. You can't earn grace, but he says grace is never opposed to effort. And there is an effort it requires to receive grace and get it into every atom, molecule, quirk, past pothole, trauma, beautiful moment in my life. And that's just the effort that it takes for us to become like nobody wakes up and is like craziest thing. I'm Billy Graham today. <laughs> the craziest thing. I'm humble. It doesn't, I'm right. patient. 
those are all you don't grow patience unless you're putting radically impatient situations. Mm -hmm. And so right. put yourself in that and let and trust God in that moment and watch right. watch what happens in your body. So right. that's that's the heart of man, have a vision, have a vision that wakes you up. And mm. then really when choices come at you, ask yourself, is this a moment for me to embody that 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 vision? And you're going to have to practice. Like I had to practice shooting hoops. You're going to have to make practices that are going to help develop that courage. Mm -hmm. And you're going to fast forward and then look back and go, holy cow. Like I actually grew this muscle. Like I'm, right. I'm more courageous. Rock Shazak, it's, it's, it's in me. And that's, that's not just going to fuel you, but it's going to fuel those around you. It's not just going to spur you on. It's going to spur those around you on. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's when I feel, feel like faith and transformation takes a, goes to a whole other level. Sure. Sure. What do you think for those that are watching tonight or that watch the replay and are trying to build their relationship with Christ, trying to strengthen their relationship with Christ, but maybe fall short for whatever reason, what would you say is like the number one thing that they could do to strengthen that? It's a great question. Um, for I'm any full of, you, of them. What? I said oh. I'm full of them. Oh, you're full of you are. It's a great, no, it's a great question. And I, I think honestly, like, just honestly, like I fall short all the time. Sure. And, you know, I, I think if you were, if you asked me this, that same question in three months, I'd probably give you a different answer. Sure. So this is just, um, this is probably just what I feel is, is helping me right now mm -hmm. and something that I, you know, it's kind of like when you, you see someone and they've, they've worked a lot, uh, at building their, you know, their, their arms and their chest <laughs> muscles, but they've skipped leg day. I mm -hmm. think there's a, there's a lot of facets in the spiritual journey where I've skipped leg day. Okay. And, um, w the two that I would just say is surrender and confession. Now, for some of you um, who might have um, a background with a certain denomination, you might hear confession and it might just trigger some experience or it might be something that you're like, ah, no, I've tried that. No, no, no. But I, I, I've just come to understand that, you know, when you come into a relationship with Christ, you're admitting you need help mm -hmm. and you're, you're admitting you need a savior. But oftentimes what happens that I find is that what led you in, John Wimber says, the way in is the way on. And the way in is I need help. And the way on is that continued relationship. God, I need help. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think for many of us, we can admit that we were wrong and that through Christ's death, burial, resurrection, we're made right. And then we never want to admit that we're wrong again. And we mm -hmm. get really, really defensive. And I've just come to realize, you know what? I mess up a lot. And as Carrie Newhoff says, you, you can't address what you don't confess. And, you know, in some AA language, the um, celebrate recover language, you know, the, the, the first three steps, uh, John Orberg taught me this. And basically, you could, you could kind of deduce down to I can't, God can, I think I'll let him. And that's, that's kind of like a, a mantra for me in this season. It's just realizing like, man, I can't fix this, but God can, I think I'll let him, or you know what? Like I can't, I can't make this relationship, this person want to reconcile. I can't, God can, I think I'll let him. Mm -hmm. And so, so what's powerful about that. And let's just go back. Let, let me just back it up one more into a deeper, to one little deeper level. You have the Lord's prayer. And the Lord's prayer at the heart of it is your will be done, mm -hmm. right? God, your will be done. You have Jesus in Gethsemane, this garden, about to be arrested, about to go to the cross. He brings three disciples with him. He says, pray with me. They all fall asleep. He comes back, pray with me. They all fall asleep. Then Jesus utters these words, Lord, please take this cup from me. But not my will, but your will be done. Back to the Lord's prayer. But he's he's offering up something that I think is so true to every one of us because every day you are handed a cup. 
And that cup might be bitterness. That cup might be temptation. That cup might be anger. That cup might be a number of things. And you have a choice to say, take this from me. Or, you know what? Not your will. I'm just going to do my will. Or your will be done. And when you actually can get to a posture of surrender, where you recognize, man, this relationship isn't where I want it to be. My faith isn't where I want it to be. Mm -hmm. My marriage isn't where I want it to be. I can't change the situation. I can just surrender to what is and trust you that you're going to do a work in me. And I want you to take this cup because I, I want my relationship to go back. Or I want, I want this thing to get back to, to where it was, or I want to be better. I want to be that. Uh, it, you can't just bypass that. Mm -hmm. But, but like, even if you don't take this cup, I'm going to trust you. Well, I'm going to trust that your will will be done. Right. But here's the thing. As humans, I know as, as, as on the regular, the temptation comes. And in, I want to be the kind of person who says your will be done. Mm -hmm. But I declare often my will be done. So when I choose that and my impulsive will takes over, Mm -hmm. And I, I don't reflect on being a person of my vision. My impulsive will takes over. Then all of a sudden I've lived less than God's best. So what do I do? Well, in that, that case, I didn't choose surrender. Now I have the invitation to choose confession. Mm -hmm. And that's where I confess and just be like, man, I did it again. <laughs> I just, I like, and, and Lord, forgive me. But also on top of that, I'm also trying to invite other people into my life. And, and I'm really good at image management. I'm really good at trying to make sure people see the best version of me. But you mm -hmm. know what, you know what confession does? The byproduct of healthy confession is humility. You know, the byproduct of confession also is gratitude and you know the byproduct of confession also is curiosity because you'll get you'll you'll start to wonder why do, why do i keep falling into the same trap mm -hmm. and if you think about the essentials of spiritual formation curiosity gratitude and humility so that's so again all of this stuff starts to play together to help us have a deeper understanding of a life in jesus so if you like me fall short own it. Yeah. Admit it. You messed up. Okay. You're human. Welcome mm -hmm. to the club. You're not perfect. You are just like me in need of a savior. And you know what? I'm not, I'm not saying that if you don't confess, you're not saved. No, no, no. Like you, you've already, you've already become a believer. Mm -hmm. but this is about, this is not salvation. This is sanctification. This mm -hmm. is you becoming more whole, holy and spiritually healthy. And when you become that, you go deeper with Jesus, but you also become healthier and people want to be around that. And they also see, Absolutely. here's someone who could say, I was wrong. Mm -hmm. And in that, in our culture right now, it's hard to say that because what we think is when I say I'm wrong, I'm giving you power to actually use against me when maybe that is the case. But you know who I'm really giving power to is God to be more at work in me. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm just trying to do is practice surrender. And confession. I can't, God can. I think I'll let him. Yeah, I really like that. I wrote several notes down during that. Thank you so much. We have uh, someone that actually commented. Um, this is a good tag along to that. If someone listening tonight, and if someone is listening tonight, and this is the first time Jesus has tugged at their heart, they never heard this message before, what would you suggest they do as a next step? Great question. Um, I would, I, you know, I always will say talk to someone because um, I think I think if you can if you can find someone that you trust that has a healthy relationship with Jesus, that's mm -hmm. that's that's great. Mm -hmm. Number two, if you're if you're a reader, I can give you a list of books to read. Um, and but but three, I would just say uh, sometimes we can almost overwhelm ourselves, and it, then all of a sudden, what starts with just this this moment of inspiration or beauty we uh ocd our way mm -hmm. into slavery you know what i mean and and i just would say the simple thing is 
what's the best next, what's the next best right step? Mm-hmm. That's often what I have to ask myself on the regular. What's the next best right step? Uh, it's probably someone I got to talk to. Uh, it's probably like uh, a mentor, maybe the call. And when I just, when I just take a breath and I ask a simple question like that, often like God will just whisper, uh, what about this person? Call them. Uh, what about this? Read this. What about, and it's just, it's, um, I just try to listen. And then if I'm unsure, well, I'll talk to someone I trust and respect, like a mentor or pastor or therapist and, and just begin that, that simple journey of being kind to myself. You're the only one that's ever been you. Yeah. There is no map. Like you, you're the first right. version of you ever to walk this earth. So be kind to yourself and ask for help. Yeah. And watch God do what God wants to do, which is help you be the best version of you, a life that's grounded in the way of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. That's a great segue. You mis- mentioned a list of books. So let's segue into your newest book and <laughs> tell us a little bit about um, the thing beneath the thing. Yes. So at the heart of the thing beneath the thing is if you're like me, you often wonder, why did I say that? <laughs> why did I re yeah why did I react in that way and I think the more that we do work we understand that whenever we re- react we're just reenacting the pain of our past or if we get hysterical as my counselor says it's most likely historical um, and someone's just getting close to a pain point in our story and I was really taken by Paul in Romans where he says, I do not understand what I do. The good I want to do, I just don't do. The thing I hate, I do. And I can relate. Mm -hmm. But if Twitter's taught us anything, uh, (laughs) that's not a good excuse. Mm -hmm. You, you, You never see someone who like does something they wish they didn't do and goes, hey, I don't understand why what I do. The good I want to do, I just don't do. The thing I hate, I do. Mm -hmm. Then people would be clapping back on Twitter saying, well, do your work and figure it out what's going on. Mm -hmm. And that's at the heart of this book is I've come to realize is that there are, there are these things underneath the surface. And those are, those are pain points, trauma wounds that we've just been holding on to. Mm -hmm. And God, God in his infinite kindness just continues to bring people into our life that will lead us to a place of healing and wholeness. Mm -hmm. God's dream isn't just to get you to heaven because eternity starts the day you were born. And literally what he wants is for you to be the most whole, holy and healthiest version of you. Mm -hmm. And you can partner with him in the here and now. And again, in that he wants to deal with the past. He wants to deal with that relation. He wants to deal with that lie that was spoken in your, your Mm -hmm. heart. He wants to deal with that trauma that you we're left caring and it's not your fault and it's not fair, but now it is your responsibility. And so this book is helping you understand what triggers you because we all have triggers and where we go when we get triggered. We often will go to a hideout, some kind of metaphorical place to escape the pain or trauma. Or for some of us, when we get triggered, we get profoundly insecure and we start creating these false stories about ourselves. I always mess up. I'm just this. Blah, blah, blah. And it's usually old tapes from what someone authority figure spoke into our life or we get triggered and it's not just a hideout or an insecurity. We create narratives, false stories about other people. They always do that. Those are those people. <laughs> and, and what I've come to realize is there's nothing more beautiful than grace. And grace, uh, in John Wesley terms, there were three stages of grace. And one of them was sanctifying grace. And that's that spiritual process of us becoming whole and holy and spiritually healthy. And so the book really helps you address and identify your triggers, where you go, and you begin to learn a little bit more about how you can have grace absolutely take over every past trauma pain point wound in your story so that you can actually experience the life that God dreams and Jesus actually died and resurrected so that you could embody and have in the here and now Mm -hmm. that's the thing beneath the thing. All right. I just wrote on my checklist to buy the thing beneath the thing because I (laughs) feel like I need to read that. 
that's for sure. Well, I don't know about everybody else watching, but I feel filled up tonight. So thank you so very much from the bottom of my heart for joining us. Before we leave, can you tell people where they can find more about Steve Carter if they like what they heard tonight? Yes. Uh, for all my friends who are watching, um, who are Indiana fans or Purdue fans, you can find me at the University of Michigan cheering on the Big Ten champions. <laughs> I had to say it. I'm sorry. No, um, you can find me at stevecarter.org on Instagram, Twitter at Steve Ryan Carter. Um, and yeah, um, it is truly an honor. And I I love again just 2019, you had this dream and just were like, I think I want to do this. And yeah. you just did it. Just and did that's it. and that's just like amazing, probably all these moments that you've had and conversations and connections with people, you know, just through this little community that you're building. And I just, I mean, like. You, you start those kinds of things and you never know where it's going to go and who you're going to get to meet and mm -hmm. what conversations are spurred on. So thanks for your faithfulness. That just inspires me just to go. Yeah. Once again, when you hear those promptings and whispers, say yes, put yourself out there and see what God will do with it and through it. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for watching and tuning in. Um, come back in April. We're not going to have as deep as a topic in April. We're going to talk about worms, worms. in April. And it's going to be so much fun. So I will see you guys later. Thank you so much. Good night.